in sella alla bersagliera! Okay, welcome to part two here. Hmm. Anarchy Lobsters, Anarchy Lobsters. In this next part, we're going to take a look at some Jim Baker stuff. Now, Jim Baker is a crazy motherfucker. And the people that follow him, they're just as motherfucking crazy because most of them are just as old as he is. Hey, as he is. I digress. Now, Jim makes some really extraordinary claims, and he has some really, really extraordinary guests on his show at times. But I bet you this guy here has got to be just about the wackiest fuck you've ever seen. Maybe not. But let's check and look. Let's let's take a look. Let's find out. And let you be the judge. The President of the United States. Oops. I've got to. And some believe that God. Holy shit. How do I make myself go away? There we go. Now look at this motherfucker on the right. I, I was going to say, why did God that choose him? That ball is first. Do you think God chose Donald Trump to become Look at this guy. <laughs> listen, listen to this. Yeah, I went to high school in Lancaster. I wasn't thinking of praying about the elections. God. Uh, because I was not focused on that. But one evening, another man of God was speaking. And I was just sitting in the meeting. And I was just praying. When I suddenly I felt just praying. in my spirit, I heard a voice say, come up. When I heard the word come up, my spirit was caught up to heaven. Yeah, he and went all I the way to heaven. At the council of the prophets. <laughs> and Abraham was seated there. Holy shit, he yeah, Abraham was council. there. Yeah, like and a when I stood bunch on the of judges. Right of Abraham, Ooh. And uh, as soon as I came there and I looked at Abraham, uh, just a little later, I saw the spirit of Donald Trump appear there. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't make this shit up. You know, I got to tell you, there is some wacky shit in this world. Really wacky shit. And uh, hopefully I'm on camera again. I'm not really sure. But uh, let's check it like this. Yeah, there I am. Okay. There's some wacky shit in this world, but... That's one of the wackiest, dumbest fucking things I have ever heard in my life, you know. And the fact that people actually, I mean, believe him, right? Or maybe they don't. They just look at the funny man, you know. Um, but anyway, let's keep let let's let's go back incognito here. Oh, well, let's go down here and uh, let's see what else he has to say. So he he went to heaven. And he, he stood at the right side of Abraham, right? And they had they showed this thing, and it, and it said that Donald Trump was... See, this is what's wrong with these fuckers. They have made Donald Trump into some sort of biblical fucking thing, right? Um, 
And it, uh, Abraham looked at me and he said, Abraham it has looked been at decided him. in heaven that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States of America. Oh. Yeah, and I listen, and they're like, oh, really? Wow, that's fantastic. We're just supposed to take your word for it. Fuck. Oh, here comes God's favorite fucking whore. Fucking, uh, now she's going to talk about Donald Trump, and she loves him some, she loves her some Donald Trump. I just challenge all of you to pray for our president, pray for our first lady, pray for our vice president, pray for our second lady. And their families cover them in the precious yeah, blood of absolutely. Jesus. Cover them in the precious blood of Jesus. Now, let's just think about that. I don't give two fucks whose blood it is. That's nasty. Of course, uh, God's favorite little ex whore right there had four fucking abortions at Planned Parenthood back when she was. Not a Christian, I don't believe. She was wild, and you could tell she was a party girl. That no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' name. Yes. We love our president, we love our vice president, we love our first lady, we love our second lady, and they stand up for, we know Vice President Pence does, and Karen does. Yeah, we know fucking Pence is a goddamn fundy, man. The evolution hasn't even been proved yet. Oh, uh, climate change, you know, hey, it's winter time here, you know, and it's snowing. Why isn't it hot? I don't fucking know. A bunch of morons. They stand up unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, they should be embarrassed. Scary for us. And we bet Jim has been preaching it for the past two days pretty, pretty strong. They're saying it's mental illness. Oh, yeah. Check out where, fuck, where she goes next. Holy shit. This is the fear the fear and bullshit that these fuckers pass off as preaching the word end times armageddon everybody's the enemy right god loves you but you better repent and all the evil things that all the bad people that don't think like us you know they're gonna put us away and the fear mongering, you know, it's like they're gonna come get our guns and with Christian a lot of these fundies, it's like oh they're gonna come for us and put us in the mental hospital uh, because let just listen. Okay, if the world is thinking that we're all mentally ill, you know what's gonna happen? There's a lot of people that are mentally ill, right? Not just you fucking Lori. Centers. I don't know what kind of word to use, but I know what. I don't know, maybe a psychiatric center, you know, a mental health wellness clinic, um, a crisis center, a hospital emergency room. That's how fucking stupid she is, you know. They're, they're you know, it's such a big thing that, oh my gosh, it's a crazy place, you know, and the, the thing, you know, that they try to still make. You know, like a mental health facility, the scary fucking place. Crazy, so you gotta go to a mental health facility. You know, you gotta go to a uh, psychiatric hospital. You gotta go to the little UK. When you've been, yes. as a woman, in, I'm not in my 50s anymore, but. Nah. <laughs> that was in her 50s. You know what they used to do to women that went through menopause back years ago? Yeah. They put them in insane asylums because their hormonal balance was completely off. That's totally a false statement. They didn't put every... They put a lot of people in what was called asylums back then for many different reasons. Hysteria was a common fucking diagnosis for many things. And a lot of people went to asylums for many different reasons. It wasn't necessarily... A mental health issue you know most likely it was probably but see once again they go back into scaring people into oh my god they're coming after us they're coming for us you know it's us against them and I'm not kidding that's what they did and I'm not kidding you know and yeah just like a lot of things 
anymore they they don't any you know they they don't do that anymore like a lot of things they don't do you know we used to put wacky bitches like her on i don't know give her a broom you know it's probably not good for much else that's what's going to happen to us as christians they're going to no. lock us up and throw us out if we don't stand up. It's in the Bible. If we yeah, of course it's in the Bible, Jim. Yeah, if you don't stand up. Jim's selling pancakes and milk. Because in Luke 6.36 it says, for, those, for with the measure you use it, it will be with me. Yeah, yada, 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 whatever like that. So, of course, it means Jim's fucking 25 gallons of milk. Mark, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Oh, he looks like he's happy. Out of our bulk food. This is one bucket. 55 gallons. 55 gallons of, like, Powdered milk. Now, would this not be a good thing if everything stopped, if all the food was gone? It would you know, and that's another thing. If all the food is gone, you know, when the end times is here, what are you going to do? Oh, my gosh, everything is fucking terrible. Are you going to be fucking prepared? Oh, shit, everything's fucking bad, but I want to make money while you're doing it. Oh, nuclear winner. And I think that what. Oh, God. You know, I hate this fucker. You know, this is one of these people that. Well, it's one reason why I don't get into discussions because he's dumber than fucking whale shit. He's explaining about morality and truth and God's love and, you know, just everything, trying to disprove once again that atheists. Or whatever happens is instead of really getting down to the root and the core issue what we do instead is we assume neutrality what the atheist asked of us is he says hey look Christian if the Bible's true step off of the Word of God walk away from the ultimate authority which is scripture and rationalize with me the atheist now, I'm pretty sure that's not the way the fucking conversation goes, but he, he's he's an idiot, and uh, uh, he's trying to make some fucking point, you know, so, Because, yeah. after all, I have the answers found in logic and knowledge. No, people don't have all the answers in knowledge with logic and reason. Logic and reason are things that people use to figure out concepts and problems and things in everyday fucking life. You know? They make it sound like, well, if you use a logic and reason, I don't understand why you can't figure God would be around because, damn, look at everything here. If you use logic and you look outside, by the way, it's snowing in Rhode Island this morning. Fuck, it's fucking spring. <laughs> Opening night is five days away. Anyway, uh, yeah, doing these stupid fucking arguments about morality and where do you get your truth from, why is it that they have to have, like, uh, just, this is stupid and rationale and the ability to think through critically and to be able to test a certain subject and to make sure that it does in fact this guy's trying to fucking sound smarter than he is um which isn't very smart uh come in alignment and what they're not telling you is is they do not have neutrality they do not have that perspective they yeah, check out why we don't have this perspective. All have presuppositions that they in themselves will adhere to. 
No, first of all, no. Why are you an atheist? Because I don't believe in God. Alright, prove it. What the fuck does that even mean? You know, I don't believe it, so why do I should prove it? Say there's God, tell me what you know, whatever the fuck. But this guy's, this guy's a fucking retard. Give you an example. Okay. If you take. Oh, yeah, and these Christians that get on the fucking. They come up with the dumbest. And I've used this one before. It's one of my all-time favorites. But just check out how this guy's uh, example. Take Pepsi and you take Co Coke and you shake them both. Okay? Right, looks it like you're jerking off. Out, right? And the atheist is looking at the Pepsi and the Coke. How is he able to look at both of those and determine which is truth? First of all, he's not trying to. He try probably trying to clean the Coke and Pepsi up because what he just did was really stupid, right? Or uh, whatever. Nobody's given two fucks about which one is Coke and which one is Pepsi. That question doesn't even fucking exist anymore, right? So, yeah. Because after all, him and I, we're just evolved brain barf. Brain barf. We've been caught. I've been mean, see bags of goo, uh, floating rocks that bang and make people, and we evolved from grapes, and we we're common ancestors with ostriches and pecan nuts, and now we're brain farts or some shit, you know, piles of poop. Essentially, we are just evolved chemicals that happened over time. If that's all we are. No, that's not all we are. And that doesn't even fucking make sense, even to somebody that doesn't really understand science like I don't. But apparently neither do you, dumb fuck. Uh, poo at the zoo. What kind of fucking shirt? It's on either backwards or his shit's fucking turned around. But then how is brain barf? How brain is barf. chemicals or natural processes and the development of cells and matter able to account for what truth is because brain how dumb is this fucker and is, is he really serious because he's either really good at this and and can keep a straight face or he's really stupid because after all if all you are is just brain barf then what gives you the right to stand back and suggest that theism is incorrect because according to your world for you, if that's all we are, then why not be okay with the fact that you're just leaking um, atheistically, and I'm leaking theistically. I'm leaking that there is a God, and you're leaking that there isn't a God. Why? First of all, you know, when it comes to leaking, sure. As we get older, we all tend to leak and squeak just a little bit more and everything. And tend to need a little bit more maintenance but leaking atheistically or leaking theistically that statement right there oh fuck I still got a cold and it's snowing in April oh, crap ah. anyway ah, let's continue why is that wrong in your worldview because in my worldview I can contest to what absolute truth is. I can look at a certain subject, subject or substance or an event or a situation and go, hey, that's right, that's wrong. But according to your worldview, why is it that you feel that you can make an account for what's right and wrong in your worldview? Fuck you on so many fucking levels. Eat shit and die. If you think that's a valid fucking question, you know, if you're a theist and you think the only, you know, well, I don't know, how could, what is your moral authority for truth? You know, I could, I could go in many directions. I could talk about how it's just nice to be good to people and I don't want people to fuck with me, so I don't fuck with them. I don't kill people, so I don't want them to kill me, you know. The whole, you know, the communal thing, everybody wants to get along, you know, we have to have laws and everything. To, you're really that fucking stupid. You fucking moron. Because 
Now, I understand if, if we're watching the news and it's shown that there is a, a young girl getting raped or that there's men beating up a white man or a white man beating up a black man, I can see why that would be wrong in my worldview because God says that we were created in his image. We should treat our neighbor as, as we treat ourselves. We should love one another. We should be respectful to one another. We have a sense of dignity, a, self, uh, you know, a sense of self-awareness. But according to your worldview, why is that wrong? See, this is a big reason. The whole morality thing, how do you how do you know what's right? How do you know what's wrong? Morality bullshit. If you ask a question that is this fucking retarded, stupid. You know, and you might say, "Loves, do you being kind of rough on this guy?" Well, fuck you. You know, I really don't care. If you're really that dense in this fucking day and age, right, to understand why people are moral, how people are moral, just the psychology of how people are. Are there shitty people in this world? Absolutely. There's shitty religious people. There's shitty atheist people. There's good fucking religious people. There's good fucking atheists you know that don't get into trouble I mean the majority of people don't get in trouble on both sides the vast majority because we live in the 21st fucking century but this dumb fuck and a lot of other dumb fucks it's why I don't get into fucking debates about fucking morality because it's a stupid fucking question it shows that, look at the look on this guy's face. He is dumbfounded to think that if somebody doesn't believe in some murderous fucking genocidal prick, false god, no god, whatever, he doesn't exist, get the fuck over it. How could you know anything about anything? Dumb fuck. Why is it? that you can make judgment calls and, and dictate what's right and wrong. Now, I understand maybe according to you, maybe your brain just farted and you're... You know, once again, fuck you and fuck people that think like this or make these stupid fucking arguments. My brain farted, so I thought something was good or bad. You know, I just made a random fucking decision. Eat a bag of shit. Really, seriously. Eat a fucking big bag of shit. In Jesus fucking name of course do it you know if you're really that fucking stupid to understand no. you're able to account and say I don't agree with that that's wrong because it's fucking wrong to rape it's wrong to rob people it's wrong although it's wrong to beat people up and I'm not a violent person. I want to put my fist through the goddamn fucking computer screen right now and punch your stupid face because you're really that fucking stupid. You need to wear a goddamn helmet. That's fine within your own worldview, but if my me myself has a different worldview, these are committed just to freeze. Oh, this is another guy. You know, this is another person that comes off all nice and friendly and everything, and he wants to talk about atheist morality. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm skipping around. I made this pre-made up and everything, and I'm just ready to go. So I figured I'd do it like this. But So I'm sure we'll come back to that last by bad, you know, fucker. How do you know something's right and wrong if you don't know Jesus? Fuck you. Anyway, this guy here, he's got this long, fucking, friendly, beat-around-the-bush fucking argument about atheist morality. And he comes up with the friendliest, peachiest, dumbest fucking word salad bullshit I've ever seen. And he comes across like he's friendly, but... He doesn't like those those trolls, those people that make fun of him and stuff. He just wants to talk to people who really want to have a conversation so he can explain to them on every level why they're immoral because they're an atheist. So 
let's just get into what how how this this is just part of what he says, but you'll you'll get the fucking and, and then you know never move again. That that's not what we mean at all. Um, what we mean is that morality, proper morality, and, and what you get in the religious context for morality, is something that forms a universal, undeniable morality. Don't you want to punch him in the face already? With a universal, undeniable. So, yeah, this might be true, but is it always true? And if you don't believe this, then how can you believe? And what happens if, you know, and, and God. You know, undeniable in the sense of if you deny it, you are wrong. And, and universal in the sense of for all people, everywhere, no matter what their preferences, no matter what their values, if they deny it, they're wrong. Uh, we're not talking about. Well, I'm pretty sure. Um... You're wrong. Something that you know forces you to be good. There is such thing as free will. Morality is in fact something that. Oh yeah, God gave you. He gave you that choice to fucking deny him and be bad people, so he can kill you. To be good or choose to be evil. That means you can choose to be evil. Morality is not something that forces you to. Um, and when I say right and wrong, what I mean is that, um, what we really mean, although it. it doesn't this guy beat around the fucking bush? Get to your fucking point. Often, it's a little dangerous to put it this way, uh, for reasons I'll explain in a moment. But to make it intelligible, right is something that leads to happiness, and wrong is leads to misery. Uh, that's not necessarily true, but continue. Um, you know, so, so good is good is what leads to happiness, real happiness, true happiness, okay. and evil. He's going to explain to us what true happiness is, too, by the way. Something that leads to misery. Now, of course, we mean long term. We don't mean in the short term. Because you know, oh. the is kin. Kin. Yeah, here's another fight. Yeah, this is stupid. Get ready for, I don't know, helmet alert. It tastes delicious, but it's terrible for your health. It'll wreck your health. It's pleasure for a moment and then makes the rest of your life worse. Obviously not in tiny amounts. Tiny amounts don't do anything. But, you know, if you eat really large amounts of candy, you know, eat three pounds of chocolate a day, you're going to be miserable before too long. What the fuck in point is that? Sure, absolutely. If you eat a lot of fucking chocolate every day for a long time, you're going to get sick. It's going to probably affect your health. You'll probably get diet fucking beatings. Holy fuck. But anyway, so kids, don't eat too much candy or you'll get sick and be stupid like this guy. So, so <clears throat> it, it's that sort of thing. It's a long-term thing. Uh -huh. Now, there's an immediate problem that kind of comes up if you don't believe in the immortality of the soul, uh, which is that, as a famous economist once put it, when, when talking about you know economic projections in the long term, the long term is kind of iffy because in the long run we're all dead and that kind of gets in the way of doing you know really long term things if there isn't a you know if the long term eventually stops if in the long okay first of all yeah when you die you're dead and that's it um yeah so but we gotta we gotta think long term here because uh <coughs> anyway long term we're all dead there is no real such thing as long-term happiness. Um, you said stupid. You know, these people, they live their entire life dedicating themselves for what's going to happen to them when they die, right? Instead of enjoying their life that they have now, and in case it's the only one you have, that you make the best of it. Instead of, well, hey, you know, let's dedicate ourselves to our lives after we fucking die. And, um, yeah. No, thank you. Especially because how long you're going to live is unpredictable, but that's sort of a side note. Yeah, and, side note. You know, I, I understand that there are lots of objections. I'm not going to delve into them. But, but just suffice it to say, to answer all those objections, that there's a reason why the phrase rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic is not you know, used to describe a noble struggle against the odds, but rather an exercise in complete pointless futility. Has this guy made one single fucking point yet? 
right? This is why I love this fucking video because he won't get, you know, he, he won't just say, how can you have morality without God? But he beats around the bush and has these fucking videos that make absolutely no sense. They make less sense than I do when I start rambling in fucking hangouts. Um, I mean, you can take it to be a noble struggle if, if, if you want. But uh, yeah. Because you're going to lose in the end. About what rearranging the deck yeah. and Satanic actually is. Okay, now... Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain things that I detest. There are certain things that I deplore. A lot of things, well, I can look past, you know, because I, I think that some people are just going to do what they want. I think some people, you know, live and let live, I always say. Um... I don't mind how people live their life. I don't. I don't mind what people listen to, what kind of music. You know, I've listened to different genres of music in my life. There was a time I, I enjoyed country music. You know, I still like me some Alan Jackson, some Waylon Jennings, you know, some Johnny Cash at times. I love classical music, um, symphonies sometimes. Um, I love Vivaldi. Um, I'm a big fan of Brahms. Uh, I, I think my favorite of all time is is probably Vivaldi. Uh, it's just something that I always I, I just love. Uh, you know, it's just the Baroque style music. Um, Big heavy metal fan. I've been a metal fan most of my life. I didn't know what it was until it was called metal. But you know, I've always you know like guitars and fast beats and loud music. And, um, there's been times where, well, you know, soundtracks. If you watch my videos for any amount of time, you know I love to put music in the background, kind of a soundtrack thing. That's what I like to do. I've listened to and enjoyed many types of music in my life. I've dealt with people who listen to different types of music in my life. There's a lot of things in our lives that maybe we don't understand or maybe we just don't get. We don't find it necessary, but somebody does. What shitty to you is treasure to somebody else. So I try not to make too many judgments when it comes to musical taste. Even though, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not a rap fan, I'm not into hip hop, stuff like that. Some of the little tunes are catchy, but still not into hip hop. But as much as I like to look past other people's taste in music, one genre of music that is really reprehensible, stupid, unnecessary, and just goddamn fucking retarded is Christian metal, Christian rock. It's so fucking ridiculous. Well, you know what triggers me, you know, and... I can't, you know, make fun of many things, you know, put country, you know, Christian, you know, there's a lot of Christian country singers. I believe there are some Christians that are rock musicians that believe in God. You know? I do believe there is. And I don't care that there may be some Christians or God believers among the musical community that plays metal or rock and roll or any type. But when you put shit like this on the fucking Hatin' Satan show, Christian metal from the fucking 90s, here we go.
Yeah, yeah, Jesus rocks, man. Yeah, slamming for Jesus. Look at these two Nimrods. How's it going, Brada? Shaka Brada. I never met any fucking metalheads that went around going, Hey, Shaka Brada. You know, Southern California beach dude thing. Look, he's got a fucking beret. The other guy on the left, okay, he looks like he's probably had banged a little bit. The guy on the right looks like a tool, you know. It looks like, hey, I want to be popular. I'm, you know, whatever. But Christian metal, there was, and it's still a fucking thing. But just listen to this fucking shit. Hey, we got a special guest today. Yeah. You're right. This is always loud. Always end up too loud. So you can tell right there that he's not really a metalhead because it's never fucking too loud. Everything louder than everything else. You know, a metalhead saying, oh, it's too loud. Fuck. Uh, this is Tice from a, a local band. Yeah. It's called Punk Thrash. Ooh, uh, yeah, Christian Punk, punk Thrash, thrash man. Metal. Hardcore Gold metal. Mm. And uh, we want to spend a few minutes here. Yeah. The show, just kind of talking to Tice and seeing what's going on with him and... And, and I'm just jerking off with amazing. Jesus, man. He's been going to a bunch of the shows. We've been yeah, man. Uh, way We've back been rocking out with gig. Jesus. Fact, yeah, guys. man. Yeah, right man. on, uh, man. You were about, what, about, about that big? <laughs> 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 so, you guys that was, what, Angle six years ago? Coming over there and yeah, oh, man. There he is, is man. Shitty reception. About yeah, 1990, ago. man. Yeah, yeah but had, three years ago, man. Wow, where's the time gone? Oh, man. Like this show's been on, what, three years now? Yeah, but has anybody ever seen it? Almost. Who cares? Yeah, I've been watching all three years, too. Yeah, yeah you and three other your friends. He's touched. Touched in the head. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go with some fucking anybody humor. the Hate and Satan show that long, something's got to be wrong with him. <laughs> That's why nobody watched your fucking show, um, probably. We're going to let... Tice, tell us a little bit about himself. Um, as he said, this is like his first show that he brought down, Pig. And, man, it was awesome. It was just a killer show. And then afterwards, the Zeros, all the ministry they had going on there, it was, it was awesome. Oh, yeah. That's what I want to look forward to when I go to a metal show is all the ministry, man, and all the testimonials, and all the anointing, man. Fuck. And then, uh, unfortunately, I had to go back to California to do some but uh, I returned uh, this last semester, and I'm now a junior at Del, Del Mar College. And, uh, working and probably right now he's either unemployed or uh, still working at Del Mar College as a janitor. You know, my accounting degree. So I'm at Del Mar now. I'll be at CCSU pretty soon. Oh, yeah, CCSU, man. And so education Go State. pays off, right? Definitely. All right. I take my education seriously. Well, you know, we... You know, there's one thing about this look that it Christians a whole lot is that, uh, that a lot of people think that we're uh, monolithic in our in our thinking, that we only think of one particular thing in the gospel, and now it's all that matters, and that's not always true. We, uh, you know, we're, we're very uh, big on being productive citizens, going out, you know, taking your education as far as it'll go, and, 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 and getting a good job, and, and, and being a, a part of society, and doing what God wants you to do. That's the main, main thing. And You know... It's really good that, you know, Christians go out and they're productive citizens and they do the best with their education, you know, and they, they go out and they strive to do their best because, well, that's what Christians do, you know, and God, they just think all we do is sit around and worship Jesus, man, but we're, we're so much more, so much more. And, uh, and uh, you know, the idea that we're more heavenly minded uh, that we're too heavenly minded and no earthly good. Right. You know, there's a balance there, and uh, and part of that is going to school, getting a good education, and being a productive citizen. Because because the more you know, the more you can do. And, uh, That's right. Uh, I just encourage you to continue. Your... Aren't these guys role models for American kids today? Going on, yeah. But uh, I want to touch on some of. Uh oh, the... we're gonna have some intense stuff on the way, man. We've got your fleas, our fleas in the garage, whatever, says P.S. Music that has influenced you 
uh, you know, maybe you could tell me a little bit about your uh, your Christian testimony and how how music was important to you before you were saved and, and you know even after you were saved or how it influenced you. Okay. You know, the testimony in a fucking heavy metal band, the testimonials with heavy. That's, that is like the most unmetal thing you can do. Even if you are religious in some fucking way. You know, even forgetting what rock and roll was. Man, it was rebellion. It was play it as loud. It was to piss your parents off. You know, it was to be aggressive. It was to have fun. It was a party. But you gotta throw Jesus into it, man. And have a testimony, man. Jesus changed my life, man. Yeah. And I really thank God for that too, because that's helped me out a lot. And I've been to church and Sunday school all my life. Well, so good I, for you. Um, a lot of people have. Yeah. I really thank God that uh, I was. My parents brought me up in a Christian, Christian living, and uh, like I said, I got saved when I was about six. First of all, you were uh, not old enough for age of consent, even in the church. You know, in the age of, you know, you have to be. Uh, confirmed so you know saved at the age of six yeah you love jesus and uh <coughs> about age uh i guess about 16 um i started falling away from god yeah and, man you know, really doing drugs life, man been, you know peer pressures took over and stuff like oh, that oh fucking peer yeah, pressure man it's no joint just, man uh, got right with god yeah man because you had to live in the fucking real world and, fuck and that's about time started getting to, into Christian music really heavily. I listened to, I grew up on stuff like um, Michael W. Smith and stuff like that. I was about 15 or 16. And uh, it started developing into stuff I liked, the heavier stuff that I was playing. And uh, I got in, into bands like, um, I started getting heavier with Petra and then it eventually evolved into stuff like Vengeance Rising and, and bands like that and Crucified. I really started well, playing a, those bands. Oh yeah, how heavy metal is that, man? Crucified, man. Crucified for Jesus, man. Holy fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've come to the end of part two. Please continue to watch and look forward to part three. Hail Satan! Uh.